for another Wednesday night pr uh, prayer as well as a Bible study. We have been studying, hallelujah, uh, from uh, the book of John. John, John, uh, John writes a beautiful book for us, and we are grateful for what he is doing, sharing with us, living uh, the good life. And we have been uh, talking about this good life. Let's look at our scripture uh, for the month that everybody has down in their hearts tonight. The ones we know that you know it by heart. We know that you got it in your spirit. We know that it is a part of your walk. Come on, church. Let's recite our verse of the month, Matthew 22, verses 37 and 40. And let's go. Hit it. Jesus said, love, love the Lord your God with, with all, all your passion. passion. And, and prayer, prayer and, and intelligence. intelligence. Yes, this, this is, is the most, the most, most important, important, the first, the first on any list. list. But, but there, there is, is a second, second to set alongside, alongside it. Love, love others, others as well as you love yourself. yourself. These, These two, two commands, commands are, are pegs. And everything in God's, God's law, law and, and the, the prophets, prophets hang from them. from them. Glory. Everything. Not something. Everything in God's law and prophets hang from them. Love. Somebody say, what's love got to do with it? It just told us everything in God's prophets. God's law and the prophets hangs from them is the love. Love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. Then he talks about the second one that's there. <laughs> love others as well as you love yourself. And I know we like ourselves, but love the Lord. All right. So we are thankful to the Lord for our scripture for the month. And we hope that you still uh, study that. You still have a day. What is it? 31 days this month? 30 days have September. Anybody remember that little speech we used to say? All of us have 31, except, and then we had to go through it. And some of us had to look at your knee, your, your knuckles, I think is how they put it out there. But living the good life, and we're thankful to the Lord for that. We're going to look at our uh, scripture that we're going to be, well, let's do a review. So the, the quick review, uh, uh, we started out uh, with this, uh, looking uh, what it's, means to be some, someone to be um, having a good life. And we talked about it being having abundance of money, but Jesus came to teach us otherwise. So in John's gospel, life is uh, equal to light and light is equal to Jesus. So if you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. And we were looking at uh, how the, the word lets us know that uh, this thing we're supposed to have the zeal for the Lord and, and zeal uh, helps us because it impresses God and it influences others and it changes us changes me and you then we went into uh, our next uh, session and we talked about repentance and uh, we must repent which is basically changing the way we think about life by accepting the way God thinks about it. Repentance is an inward change. It's an attitude thing, attitude that leads to an outward change in action. So we were born again. And John gives us the scripture, verily, verily, I say unto you that he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So we're looking at this repentance. We know all about that in our walk. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. So let's look at, and then we went into a balance in life, how we balance things in our own life, church and our family life. And he wants us to have a balance in, in things. So it's always easy to overemphasize some of the biblical principles. That's what it's saying in that first bullet point at the expense of other equally important principles. But the Bible instructs us to balance uh, the scales got to continue to balance and then on the uh, fourth one that we learned is one thing is to look to live the good life he must uh we look at jesus rather than our circumstances not getting 
caught up on the problems that you see in front of you, but we look to Jesus because he is the one that can answer all our prayers. We've prayed tonight. There are many people who have issues, circumstances that are in their life that are change, uh, really tearing up their minds, making them lose sight of what uh, victory is all about, forgetting all about the, the great work that God has already done in our life, how we were uh, already in sin, and then how he moved us and put us into a special place. And, and he's blessed us, filled us with the Holy Ghost, gave us a new attitude, new mindset. So we have to look to him instead of looking at the circumstances that we are going through. And then we uh, continued on with our studies and we came into a, a point where, um, let me move this thing, um, condemnation and conviction. And we talked about condemnation, it comes from Satan. It pushes us away from God. It always leaves us feeling that there is no solution. It puts us in a bondage to our fears and our feelings. And then we had con conviction and that comes from God and it draws us closer to God. It always leaves us feeling that there's a way out. How many know that we need a way out? And he gives us that. He allows us to walk in the freedom of the spirit. Now check out this next one, because this is important. It, we got to understand that we have to understand that we have to have one or the other you're going to have one. So there's also an extreme. Some people reject everything, anything that makes them feel uncomfortable as condemnation when it really, when it's really conviction. What they don't realize is that you must have one or the other operating in your life at all times. If you want to get rid of condemnation, you have to allow God's conviction in your life. We have to do some things. You want to get rid of condemnation? allow God's conviction. He convicts us. So we, we were looking at that in uh, uh, one of the uh, studies that we had. And then uh, last week, I believe it was, yeah, the promises, the principles of promises, God's timing. It's not like ours. God's perspective is different from ours. Our vantage point is so very limited by, by our humanity. What can't see, what we can't see the future and we talked about this if we could see ahead our minds we would have an overload because we wouldn't be able to put all those things together the situation we'd be so perplexed he knows exactly what he is doing and also what he is allowing in our life and then he talks about god's method which is far different than ours he has everything in line he knows how to help us to grow so we were there we've been there been through those six things and tonight we're going to look at living the good life are you secure enough to serve and there's a scripture that we want to use as our uh, uh branch or our springboard and it's saint john's the 13th chapter of uh, verses of four and five he says rises from the, the supper he rises from the supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples feet and he wiped them with the towel wow and this is talking about jesus he rises from the supper it's important to know that uh uh in our walk how important servitudes to be a servant is in this 13th chapter or, or leading up, up into this week the disciples had been uh arguing fussing trying to uh, posture themselves to, to a position, uh, a position as uh, they knew the time for Jesus to, to go to Calvary was uh, closely upon them. This is, and the foot washing that we're talking about here was doing the, um, after the Last Supper and their <laughs> disciples are trying to see who's on the right and who's on the left. So we really have to get to see how God really deals with it. Uh, so we see how the disciples were caught up in uh, ambition for positions and for power and authority. Uh, just imagine how Jesus might have felt um, and how it might have cut him because he knew his time was, was short and he didn't have a long time to be teaching them this. But how could he get a message across uh, forcibly something that they could really understand and grasp that they would know and get, understand the truth. It was this that led him to this particular part of the scripture or to the scripture that he was going to show what service and what service was all about. 
And uh, we, we have um, John 13, uh, 4 and 5 as our springboard as we go through our discussion tonight. So um, let's look at it. Let's look at what, uh, what was happening here. And that, this is basically what I was just say, speaking of. Say John is the only gospel writer who tells of uh, this incident, but Luke talks about it. He gives us an argument that there was an argument that led up to it. Uh, there was a strife between his disciples and Jesus was serving them the Last Supper and telling them that he was headed to Calvary. And we have a scripture of Luke 22 and 24 talking about the strife. So the world uh, that first second bullet is what we want world defines greatness in terms of power possession prestige and position if you're uh, able to demand service from others the world thinks that you've arrived uh, just looking at our united states and how uh, 45 was always uh looking at his position as a position that everybody else should fall in line i am the president and I, I i'm here I, I i'm the one with all the possessions i i make all the rules and but what he <laughs> failed to realize that the position is not at all you have to be willing to serve he did not serve or has not served from what i can see uh the u.s well he had issues and so in, in our um and uh, our walk and our culture acting like a servant is something that's um, very, it's an unpopular thing. It's not a good thing that you be a servant. Um, but Jesus is telling us here today is that it is the framework for being in the kingdom of God. He says in this third bullet, he taught us to measure greatness, not in terms of status, but in terms of service. See, God determines your greatness how many people you serve not how many people serve you and so this is contrary to the world's idea of greatness but the disciples had a hard time understanding it alone actually pr practicing it they were jockeying for a position that was two thousand years ago so the question is has anything changed what would your response be? Has anything, are people still jockeying for position instead of looking for avenues and ways to, to serve? Um, any, any comments? No comments. I'll say that it hasn't changed. I say we same people still jockeying for positions, even within the body of Christ. In the churches, people are jockeying for positions. People are looking at positions rather than looking to do the work. I was fortunate enough to um, to work with uh, uh, um, the late Bishop Ronald Sanders in uh, some ventures, some uh, things in the church, and I always admired him. Uh, he considered himself having a ministry of help, meaning he would do whatever was necessary. He didn't look at his position at the church uh, as being what required him to do it or anything like that. He looked at there was a need and someone had to do it. You remember that little story about someone, anyone, and all that. I can't remember how it goes, but anybody could do it. Nobody would do it. Everybody got mad when somebody did it, that that little story there. But that's that's what uh, Jesus is really teaching us here in this uh, passages, these passages of scriptures. I would only pull an excerpt out of it, but he's teaching us if he can go down and wash the feet of his disciples, <laughs> something's wrong when we have to worry, you worried about his position instead he's showing how humble he could be himself. So it's important that we find that uh, we have to look at ways to, to be a, um, a servant and not always look for somebody to serve us. Um, so that's really what we're going to be talking about. So the uh, next slide talks about uh, who or why anyone can be a servant, why anyone can be a servant. And it says, real servants make themselves available to serve. How many of us do that? Make ourselves available. You might as well come off. I'm talking to y'all tonight. You might as well come off of mute and start talking. 
say they don't fill up their time with other trivial pursuits that could limit their availability. It would only serve, they would only serve in convenient for you when it's convenient for you and you're not a real servant living for ministry and living for money are uh, mutually exclusive goals. If you're a servant of God, you can't moonlight for yourself. Wow. No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. Powerful states. That's a scripture, uh, different version, different translation, um, the New American Standard. And it's uh, so to be available to serve, how many make ourselves available? How many come in and volunteer? How many say, if you need anything? I'm talking to, to, to my church, I think. How many of us are willing to, to go beyond ourselves and look for ways to help others making yourselves available? Number two was real service, simply, simply pay attention to needs. That's what I was speaking up earlier about uh, Elder um, what's up, Bishop Ronald at that time. Uh, now it's deceased, but he was an elder then. He looked at what was needed to be done. They're always on the lookout for ways to help others. And the Bible teaches that the need of your church family are to be given preference, not put at the bottom of your to-do list. Even your marriage and your family are not eternal institutions, but the church is. And we, we can look at another scripture that is a uh, translation that whenever we have the opportunity, we have to do what is good for everyone, especially for the family of believers. And this even ties back into our scripture for the month, really, when you look at it. So anyone Anyone can be a servant. Yes, anyone. A real servant, number three, simply, <laughs> they do each task with equal dedication. The size or outward importance of the task is irrelevant. God never exempts us from the mundane, or menial, because that's a crucial part of our character development. Nothing is beneath a servant. Nothing is too beneath us to, to be, uh, even as a, a, a pastor, if, if one pastor shares with me, he, he doesn't have any younger um, um, deacons or anything like that. When there's snow on the ground, he himself goes out because there's a need to shovel the snow so that it does not, won't harm someone, someone slipping, he puts the salt out. It's important, that's a ser servant looking at a need and then acting upon it. That's what a real servant does, he's dedicated. So God always is more inter interested in why we do something than in what we do. Attitudes always count more than achievements. That's what being uh, showing us how to be a servant, what a servant, why we can all be servants, because that's what we're looking for. He's always this looking for something, why we do something, then what we do, attitude, attitude always counts more than achievements. I must pause right there from what we've been talking about so far. Any comments, anybody want to add anything to what we were saying? And Pastor, I was thinking about actually going back to number two, um, which you were mentioning in it, uh, that part about even the marriage and family are not eternal institutions, uh, but the church is. And I'm wondering, uh, over the decades, you know, there are a lot of examples of family and marriage is disintegrating because uh, there was a, a, a out of balance level of energy of the servant to always be taking care of church matters and not home. And 
I'm just wondering about a statement. where, where, uh-huh. that, well, not the statement, but where do where we you draw the line operationally? Yeah. And I know uh, real quick, the, uh, the, you know, there are scriptures that give the natural criteria in order to be ready to be a spiritual servant, to be, uh, have one wife, not given to too much wine or not drinking at all, you know, those kinds of natural criteria, then that prepares you or that at least signals that you're ready to be a spiritual leader. Mm-hmm. Well, well, spiritual leader, but see that servants does not always have to be the, the pastor or anything. So uh, servants, look what, what Jesus was doing. He was uh, what thinking about someone washing feet, you, you put in that as a low level job probably if you had to do something but going back to your point of of the marriage and how the institution of marriage has kind of been uh shifted in in people's mindsets and because divorce rates are high and kids are divorcing parents and all that we talked about that earlier one one of the sessions where we talked about a balance what what happens is we as as people don't balance our lives in a way where we're uh ensuring that all uh parts of, of of a family or our lives are are taken care of in a way that we're not avoiding or putting more weight on one than we should uh, husband and wife and children that that is very important and you shouldn't focus totally on on the church in the sense that you are uh, always in the building we there was a little story about a pastor that um, he was always working in the church. He never had time for his wife. He um, would go in morning, leave night, come home. She's already cooked. He would eat. They wouldn't see each other. And then he's back in there the next morning, taking and dealing with other people. So one day she got to say, I never see my husband. So she called the church office, called the, the uh, church secretary to put in an appointment. And when she called, the secretary didn't answer. He did. And she says I, he, she was asked, speaking to him, saying, I would like to put in a, a, a have an appointment with the pastor. And he says, well, I'll patch you over uh, to her. But she wasn't there. But so she's out and you can leave a message. He came back later and started pondering that that voice sound familiar. That was his wife. We, we forget about family members so quickly that we avoid the things that are right there in our face. And we shouldn't. There should be a balance. Um, back to your point, it should be a, a balance in between it. So there are uh, scriptures that talk about uh, the offices of, of people, but you saw the disciples, uh, even when you go back and look in Luke and Matthew, they write about this argument that the disciples had, how they uh, wanted to be on the right and the left. And he told one of the group said, yeah, you, you know, uh, the baptism and gave him a whole list of things that they had to be ready for, and they weren't equipped. But they wanted it. People go after positions. People go after the things that they think that uh, uh, are. Look, Trump was a businessman. He wanted to be president of the United States. He reached that plateau and forgot all about everything else. Once he reached that, he looked at and tore it up after that. But we look higher at our our goals are higher than what they should be if we're not going to serve the body or what the position calls for. As president, he was supposed to serve the people of the United States. All he thought about is is himself because he was a businessman. He forgot about the the ladder that he he, he, uh, ascended to. And that's the same thing that was going to happen to these disciples if they didn't understand and learn the principles, is a good word, principles of servitude, what it really means. Anyone can do it, but can... Uh, is anyone going to make themselves available? Is anyone going to see the need? Are you looking uh, to find out the needs of, of the people and find out that what, what's actually uh, happening in their lives? Do we take the time to learn? And even in our, all, our serving our family, do we take the time to, to uh, see what our family needs? The wife needed the time to talk with her husband, the pastor. He had forgot all about it. He's dealing with everybody else and not serving home. So it, we do lose sight. We do get off off course. But here we are now talking about if you want to live the good life, you got to find that balance. You have to look for the things like that. I, I hope for that that help. I said a lot of words, but if anyone else has anything they want to add to it or or speak to, uh, please do so. Not to that 
particular point, but just the point about everything you were saying about anyone being a servant and some of the things, if we as people learn to be good neighbors and understand, you know, the magnitude of that, then I think it becomes um, not easier, but it becomes a common, uh, uh, um, a nice truck to then go into servanthood. So, and it doesn't take, like you said, any particular um, profession or any, you know, be a leader or anything, but just a good neighbor. And then once you're a good neighbor and understand the magnitude of what Jesus is calling us to do, then in turn, you become a good servant. And then some of these other attributes are added in. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. I was looking at um, number one about the real servant makes themselves available. I remember when we first started with the prison ministry, uh, there was a speaker and I think she spoke on the heart of a servant. And one of the things she kept stressing was that a lot of times, you know, you have to make yourself available. It's not always when it's convenient for you. You might think, you know, okay, I'll carve out two hours on Friday, but maybe this person needs you Tuesday, <laughs> you know? So I was looking at this here where it said, if you only serve when it's convenient for you, you're not a real servant. That's pretty powerful because a lot of times we want to make serve, but when it's convenient for us. No, oh, true. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, anyone. Didn't want to cut anyone off. No, good points. But uh, Elder, did, did that help or are we still looking, seeking ways to... Uh, that, that helped a, a great deal. And I, I was thinking more of, I mean, you answered the question. I was thinking about where did maybe we, we, the royal we, especially in the black church, where did we go wrong? Go wrong. End up being <laughs> imbalanced uh, with, um, and, and you were saying dude, with the principles, we, no matter what we're doing, we're supposed to be operating with kingdom principles at home family, marriage, work, whatever. So it's not, and you said it also, it's not about being in the building. It's about doing kingdom work. And, that, and that's anywhere and anytime. Yeah, and we can get distracted. I mean, it, we focus in, we're human. So we, you get a task and you focus on that uh, tunnel vision and you'll forget everything else. But that's where we talk about the balance coming in to make sure uh, we, the disciples, and people in general, they'll they'll hoard a uh, a job themselves. They won't they won't share. It. They won't bring others in to learn. They, we don't mentor people. I mean, there's so many little things that we don't do to to go back and answer your question that we know we should do. Someone helped you get to where you are, but you forget to help somebody else to move up the ladder as well and bring them along. We don't train people like we used to. We don't teach people so and now we have a, a group of wonderful young people that want to learn and their learning uh style is different and we're trying to force feed them into maybe an old way and we lose them and so they don't learn the principles they don't learn all the the, the things they don't they don't see it because they're they're in a different uh I guess looking at it a different viewpoint. They don't. How many? You remember back as the Boy Scouts, um, uh, good gentlemen or whatever, a puddle of water. You take your coat off and like you remember those those good those good deeds that people you that now you'd be looking at somebody and say you know why you walk around the water. You know how to walk. You won't help some old woman cross the street, an older woman cross. The street. There are a lot of principles that we just threw to the side now, um, and some sometimes it's because. Um, times change but some of the principles behind what got them to do that years ago still apply and minister renee talked about it uh somewhat it, when she dealt with the neighbor and even our scripture for the month kind of leans towards that he talks about the love of god but he also told us to talk to us about how we should love our love others as we love ourselves and when, when you do that you don't harm yourself so you look for ways to to uh, help others in that same sense. People are, are in need every day, but we 
we'll miss the message. We'll miss, just like that pastor missed his wife's voice because she was in need. We do that on a daily basis. We miss opportunities. And is it because life is just moving so fast that we, we do it or we just, again, it, we can't be selfish and just think of ourselves because then we'll miss it. So when we start, and you missed it, mentioned it too, uh, Elder, about kingdom building, you're always looking for opportunities to bring someone in. So always looking for opportunities to help somebody because we all stand in need of something. Yeah, we, whether you confess it up front and we can do without it, there are some things that we I need more time to do whatever. Help me out. My, my neighbor, when I had my surgery for uh, the kidney for cancer, it was doing the leaves started falling. I think we were getting into the fall. And, and what he shared with me, uh, he said, don't worry about your yard. I, I was big. I mean, he's got his yard. The leaves fall. He raked them all the time, put them in bags. But he saw the he saw a sick person, and there was a need. Has that left here? He wasn't in the church, or isn't in the church in the sense that we call him. I mean, he's been a good friend, a good neighbor. My neighbors around me said, by you being at George, he says it really changed. Nate. But Nate has a good heart. Nate always I call him the mayor because he's always looking for ways to help people. He'll complain, but he always. So do we have that same uh, drive to look for ways or being when somebody? throws a little hint out there, uh, not saying I need your help, but he's at the same time, they're saying enough info that you know they need your help. You know what I'm talking about? Because people throw things out and you say, they ain't pick up on that. I need, I need, or, you know, I'm looking to do something, such a thing. They don't say, I want you to help, but they say, and then you don't take the initiative to even offer, but a servant looks for needs. And then uh, again, uh, any, any comments on that, we can look into it, but this, Anyone can be a servant. This is what it was sharing with us. You got to have the right, put these principles in, in place. You, you make yourself available. Uh, you look at, at the needs and, and, we, and we move forward. So um, uh, I guess that that's, I've said a lot, but if anyone wants to still add something to it, please do so. All right, let's, uh, so we were at number three, um, dealing with dedication. And we talked about the size or the outward importance of the task is irrelevant. See, because we'll put that, I got, you asking me to do this little menial thing, this, you, all, that's all you want me to do is, is that. And we, we weigh things and measure things on our own scale. And uh, so God never exempts us from the mundane or uh, the, the, um, menial because that's crucial parts of, of our character nothing is beneath a servant he, he continues to do what's necessary what's needed so uh, those are the three why anyone can be a servant and let's look at the next part okay. the mindset of a servant and this may be Mr. Lynn may have said something like that but of uh, uh, I think from the prison ministry standpoint but here it is uh, in a different aspect here, the mindset of a servant, the servant thinks more about others than about themselves. Hmm. True humility is not thinking less of ourselves, but thinking of ourselves less. Wow. Servants are self-forgetful. This is what Jesus was talking about when he said, lose your life scripture but you can be a servant if you are full of yourself you can't be a servant if you're full of yourself real servants don't use their service as a bargain tool bargaining tool with god or with others paul may have been thinking about jesus humility before his disciples on the uh, uh, <clears throat> the eve of his crucifixion when he wrote this many years later thinking like a servant is difficult because it challenges the basic problems of my life I am by nature selfish. I must choose dozens of times a day between meetings, my needs, or the needs of others. You got the, wow, I'm by nature selfish. Are we selfish? I must choose dozens of times a day between meeting my needs. It's what I want instead of the meeting the needs of others. That's why I mentioned earlier, sometimes people are sharing with us 
uh, and we missed the message because they don't come right out and say it. And it went right over our head, but you really thought about what they were asking. They were asking for help. Um, I can measure my servant's heart by how I respond when others treat me like a servant. Wow. The mindset of a servant. What do you think of mindset of a servant? Opening it up again. You are servants. How is your, what is your mind? How do you focus? How do you think? What do you, what is your mindset? We're all servants. You graduated. I'm giving you your diplomas. Well, I was thinking, Pastor, going back up to that second paragraph there, that sentence where you can't be a servant if you're full of yourself. Um, <laughs> what, whatever you're full of, that's what's going to come out of you. That's what's going to, you're going to be able to serve. Um, so whatever is in you, that's it. So if it's self or mess or if it's love or whatever, that's what's going to come out. So to your question, I think the thing to do to focus is ensure that your gates, eyes and ears and, and whatever else are attuned to the things that Paul said in Philippians, think on these things. Um, and then that way, those things of value and of worth and of good report and honest, uh, that's what you focus on. So then that's what you'll be full of, all those godly things. Then you'll be able to serve from a place of uh, principled, godly principle place other than, because if you don't intentionally do that, you will get filled up with yourself or whatever the world fills you up with and then that's just a mess yeah that mind mm -hmm. philippians talk about it let this mind be in you that put which is also in christ jesus yeah i was thinking um the scriptures say serve the lord with gladness so when we're serving people we can't have an attitude about it, even if it's inconveniencing us, because don't nobody want to be served if you mean and nasty to them. Right. You want to pat yourself on the back because you did something, but you did it with a harsh heart. So really, then your sacrifice isn't received because your heart wasn't in the right place. So, you know, I even have to remind myself, even when somebody... I need to serve and it's an inconvenience to me. I ask the Lord, touch my heart so that I don't, you know, I take myself and my flesh out of it so that I'm serving with the correct spirit so that at the end of the day, my service can be received by whoever I'm offering, you know, my ministry to, because there's no sense in offering you. You're not ministering if your heart is not in the right place. Right. Yeah. And, and, one of the <clears throat> positions that we have in the churches, which is uh, always uh, noted and seen doing services, are our ushers. Um, they, they're servants, and um, that's not an easy, easy job per se, but it's an easy job when you get like um, Lady Jackie, where she says, I am the usher. And so it's embedded in her to look for ways to, to make your, your stay at whatever church it is that she's serving at very comfortable and to ensure that you, you're not being a disruptive, but doing she, even in that policing, they do it in a loving way. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an attitude thing. You really have to focus on, on what you're doing. And again, the task the scripture, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. People look that, I don't want to be no usher. I think when I first came into the church, that was the first job I had Mother Clark. She recruited, <laughs> she recruited you to the ushers because she was kind of, she was, she was uh, the council usher president. And she was, I think over the, the national uh, when I came in as well. So uh, she had a, um, a few reasons to help in, in doing that, but she saw also the, the discipline that an individual uh, gleans from or gathers from that by holding. You can't tell somebody not to chew gum while you're ushering if you chew gum while you're not ushering. Um, 
So it, it gets to a thing where you have to learn to do those things and it changes your posture when you came in. Don't come in and talk during church service and things that no one not to walk and all those things. And, and so it, 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 it did for me anyhow, discipline me. And I'm not saying I always passed the, the, uh, the test, but it, I knew when I was doing wrong and hopefully corrected myself without someone having to tell me. But it was a, a good schoolmaster for me by being a, a, um, an usher. But it is a servant. Hey, it's important. And that's what Jesus is teaching his disciples at this time by himself doing. And uh, go back to Philippi Philippians where it, that we were talking about the uh, two um, verses five through eight. I said, let this mind be in you that's in, also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Wow. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in a fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. I mean, that that's a powerful scripture there. When you the mind of a servant, uh, are you willing to do that? Are you willing to forget about what you want? to help somebody else what you are you willing to take the time to do those things i can measure my servant's heart by how i respond when others treat me like a servant on how others treat me my heart how do they treat you how do you treat a servant and all of this is living the good life <laughs> <laughs> what's the good life we were walking through this is what john is sharing with us to live this good life there's a there's a reward at the end of all this for us and he's teaching us a lot of things our our mindsets our attitudes our walk with him uh, through the scripture so yes this is living a good life when you can serve and he's teaching his disciples that if he teaches his disciples that why wouldn't we as disciples want to do the same. Stop looking at my position and look what I'm doing. Someone's in standing in the need of this and I can lower myself or I can move. Forget about being the word lower. I can take care of this, this job because there's a need. Washing the feet, taking the dust off your feet. Ah, I tell you, Jesus was a good teacher and he did it through example as well. He just didn't talk it. Yeah, he did it through, uh, examples and following through himself the mind of a servant number two oh and go ahead someone no i was just thinking i mean and i know um sister ebony said it eloquently as well that it's the heart so he mm -hmm. told us that out of the heart flows the issues of life and that technically we sin in our heart before we sin in our actions so to have that servant mindset we have to infuse our heart with his word and, and his spirit take over so that we can, then our actions flow out. And so then, you know, you, you have more of this selfless um, duty where it's not about I'm doing it for my own grandular, but I'm doing it as a service, as a true service, because you have then infused your heart with that. So it's now being issued out in your actions like that yeah but it's, it's seeing the need and and doing something I, I to see a need and do nothing about it your heart is not right right i would think to uh, uh to help someone that's in need and you turn your back your heart's not right now i'm not saying if, if you can't do something i'm not telling you to, uh, something that you can't do i'm talking about things that we know that we can do and even the things that we think that we can't do we can do by directing people to channels that can meet their needs. Um, and, and that's still a help. That's still being a servant. Um, but again, we got to go back. Look at that scripture that we, that scripture that we have for this month talked about intelligence. We have to look at things, you know, we, it, it's there for us to, to, to really learn from and to be able to move on uh, and stop, hindering ourselves from moving to the next level and stop watching others, but do the things that God has placed upon your heart 
because it does. That's the issues of life. They flow. That blood. All right. Uh, Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. So um, I hear and I understand the servanthood, but I think sometimes we almost feel like we got to fix everything rather than really listening to understand what the issue is. Because I see a lot of times in Jesus, when you went to him with one thing, he kind of <laughs> came out the blue with something else. And you're like, where did that come from? That's not really what I asked him. And that's not what I, but I think because he was able to make that focus. And sometimes I know with me, I guess I should say not sometimes with others, but with me, sometimes I'm looking to, when I hear things or see a need and you're looking to almost fix it. And that's not really what the servanthood is about. You don't have to fix everything. No, you, you don't. Uh, I think what what to me the, the, it would it falls back into an, an attitude of of I'm not fixing it, but I can give directions. I still didn't fix it, but I can give directions. I can give help. I can show that I care. It's right. uh, you talked about the the heart and the attitude instead of totally ignoring things, and that's that's what uh, we you have to move away from. Um, when you see a need or see something that that you could help in and you just don't do it that that's a different posture too but I, I agree it's, it's not you're not you're not the doctor servant because I don't know how to operate or the syrup but but at the same time my service is not to 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 heal the the cut or whatever but my my servant might be in the comfort or just to share with you a, a, a word of life and uh, hold on baby hold on son uh, mm -hmm. those type of the comfort that comes so there you know there's still a need for the doctor to come in and do his piece but there's a need for someone to take away the fears that I have because I don't know what I'm going through I don't know what you know there's, there's so much that goes on in our lives but to uh, I think we talked about it earlier is to actually and you said it too I think that you have to listen and hear and examine and see what the needs are that you can do there's something that we can uh look to apply in in most instances in people's lives it may not be what they ask for and that's what dr john but it comes it comes at a time that you you really have to really be willing to take the time out to find out how you can uh help somebody and be a servant um but it that's time some of us don't have time to do that you know right we we just gonna move on. Well, you need money, and I ain't got no money, so let me move on. Right, <laughs> but money might not be the even issue. You it know? might not be. But yeah, I didn't listen. Right, 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 right. right. Kind of hear with our ears, but listen with our heart. Mm -hmm. And if our heart is not in it, we're not really listening to what they're saying or what what they're actually. So you don't really know what that what they're actually looking for. Right, you don't know what the ask is. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, because we, because well, we all have, we have our preconceived notions. Number one, we always put when people come to me, they want money, <laughs> you know, and that's not what well, I they want. They want me to do something. No, I, I want to do something. To do. Yeah, but give me a lift. Yeah, we need yeah. to find issue of what's really happening that we need, and what's the that we really need to address. But it does take patience and it takes heart to listen to be yeah. be able to know that. And listening is an art. You got to be able to sit back, keep quiet, take it all in. And then try to digest it from because sometimes you you might you're right you you're gonna try to do something that you can't do. I heard you. You want me to sew this up? I'm gonna sew this up, <laughs> and I'm not the I'm not the one. I'm, but you definitely need to take time out with people, and that's that takes. Uh, um, here, here, Jesus is taking time out again to teach his disciples, so you can see how important it is, and in his taking time out because his time is short now right because he's just the, the passover the, the last supper his next mode is is dealing with the pilot and all that group so how can i get the disciples to pull this uh, servanthood thing into their spirit in a short time and that's what he he was sharing with us and the the lesson that he taught was something that they could easily pick up on washing of feet bringing the basin in and they knew the history of of all that so it helped him I, he was just a marvelous outstanding teacher because he used the uh principles 
idea, things that people could relate to. He didn't go off into out of space with stuff. He made it plain so that when you walk away, uh, even uh, Nicodemus, I mean, he, he did it with him. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a, a walk that we have to all learn to deal with and how to communicate. And um, again, Jesus was the best teacher that I can ever think of uh, because he uh, not only walked the walk, he talked the talk and shared with us. So the mindset of a servant. Uh, number two, a servant thinks about their work not about what others are doing. Wow. Servants are simply too busy working for the Lord to compare, to criticize, or to compete with other servants. In fact, competition between God's servants is illogical for many reasons, and they listen to them. We're all on the same team. Wow. Unity, huh? Our goal is to make God look good, not ourselves. Wow. How about moving yourself out the equation? We've all been given unique assignments. We talked about the gifts before, earlier in some of our lessons, and how God uses each and every one of us and for different things, but it's for the whole to benefit. So it, here again, we see that... Uh, Servants think about their work and not what others are doing. We don't focus. I want that job over there. They got me over here doing this. That's not what I want to do. I want to be the lead singer. They got me background. What they call it? Is it background? Is it what they call a back, back, back person singing in song, singing in a choir or whatever? Back, backup singers. Backup singers. Yeah. Like yeah. The, um, what's his name said? On the temptations, ain't nobody come see you, Otis. <laughs> that's, that, I think that's what David Ruffin said. Because <laughs> he always wanted to be up front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that, that's that's how we how people think, you know. Um, uh, but the, there's some, you know, many many of the lead singers started off as background, you know, backup singers, and uh, well, uh, he was right. Nobody ain't come to see Otis. <laughs> Otis was still around though, ain't he? Yeah, but he ain't singing no more. Uh, the Temptations still out there, aren't they doing it still? Otis, nah. which one? Otis, didn't he keep the group going? They ain't nothing. I, oh, you heard it through the grapevine. <laughs> 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 but it, it is true that uh, you know we we um always looking at others instead of focusing on the job before us. And if we took the time to just focus on our assignments or our task, um, God, he continues, he gives you more to, to deal with, but each piece is important. That's, that's where you have to really get to the, the really uh, just of, of the whole understanding of this is because like, uh, I know Dr. Jones, you always talk kingdom, kingdom, build. there are different components and there are different gifts and all these things are for the, the, uh, the glory of God, everything works for God. And if whatever you think we start measuring the task, we miss it because each piece of it, each one of us, you, we could talk about some, uh, the seed is planted, some water. I mean, all these things, all you're doing is you're the water person. <laughs> well, if you don't do your part, because you look, I didn't get a chance to plant the seeds. They get to play in the dirt. They get to have the fun. And, and put the seed in and, and I have ownership of the seed because I got the bag of seeds and I get to plant it. All you get to do is throw the water out. You don't have nothing to do with the water, but go dip it in the, the well and bring it pour. We, we got to stop. We don't, we don't need to do those things. And like, again, we can go back and look at even in the church, we kind of always put the ushers down as being one of the lower level uh, jobs, but they are so important because they keep order and peace in the church. They are the ones that help uh, the, the ministry, the pastor, uh, keep uh, order in the church and to help those that are uh, sitting in seats uh, to get different things that they need, envelopes and uh, direction and new people come in and making sure that they are comfortable and have seats that are uh, not in the rear, but in the front and uh, just so many little things that because they have the heart of uh, the people and and they're uh, just they're connected with the the pastor so much a good usher uh, to 
to really feel and, and to move forward with them. So it's it's a very potent position, a very important one. So, yep, that uh, servants are simply too busy working for the Lord to compare, to criticize, or to compete with other servants. That that's true. That's that's it. Because we're on the same team. And we're out to make God look good, although he already looks good. We look bad when we don't work on the right page. But that's that's what it's all about. Anybody else? Our third one. The servants. The mindset of certain is based uh, their their identity is on Jesus Christ because they remember that they are loved and accepted by grace and servants don't have to prove their worth to anyone else or to jockey for position to put them in a good light. They willingly accept jobs that uh, insecure people wouldn't consider beneath them. This is what I like here. This is why Jesus example to the disciples was so profound washing someone's feet was equivalent of being a shoeshine boy, a job devoid of status. But Jesus knew who he was, so the task didn't threaten his self-image. Only secure people can serve. Wow. Now, what do y'all got to say about that? You got to be secure in what you're doing. And who yeah, I was... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, First Lady. <laughs> I, I was just thinking about that scripture, yeah, when he um, girded himself with the towel and got down, bent down or kneeled down to wash the dust and the dirt off of the disciples' feet. And that's a part of the body that we really don't want to touch, <laughs> much less if it's, you know, dirty and dusty. But um, he was just the prime example uh, to show how to be a servant that, um, and I mean, if, if he could do it, if Jesus could do that, who are we that we can't serve somebody? That's the lesson that he's teaching. That's, that's right on. Someone, someone else was talking. I'm sorry. I was saying you have to be secure in yourself and who you are because you, you know, we can't measure our self-worth by what actions we might do. So sometimes if you do that, then you think that because I'm doing this, like you said, menial task or whatever, or this task nobody want to do, then that means less of me. No, you don't measure yourself. So you have to be secure in yourself mm -hmm. and who you are. Jesus knew he was God. Yeah. And there was no, nothing in him that feared if I, whatever I do, I'm outside of my character. No, it was his character because he was secure, even though like the scripture you said, even though he left for, as I said, you know, knowing he was God, but was willing to make himself of low reputation, even though he made himself of low reputation, it didn't take away from his godliness. So we didn't think I? because we doing a certain task, it takes away from who we are as a, as a person. And that's not how we measure ourselves. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, so important that you don't get tied up in the, the job devaluing you. Um, and and Jesus definitely showed them. But it you know this part of but it by him doing that because by him knowing who he is, they knew who he was too. <laughs> and and he didn't. He still said, uh, you know, this is I'm teaching you a lesson. This is about being a servant. And that's why it's so important um, for uh, even today for us not to get uh, hung up or think so high on, on, on what work we have to do in the kingdom. It's that there's a need and we need to put ourselves together to get the job done. And when we focus on what, what I can do to make things better, because you know who you are, you got to be comfortable in who you are. And understand as a child of God, I know who I am. I know what the Lord is. And we talked about it back when we we're dealing with the, the gifts, how he shares and shows you what your what your gift is and how you utilize it. So you both are right. So right on on that. I, I like that statement about his um, 
the task and he wasn't threatened. He, his image, he knew who he was. And only secure, secure people can serve as a powerful statement. All right. Um, our next slide. We uh, it talks about insecure people always worrying about how they appear to others, and I think this is one of the things you guys were talking about. They fear exposure of their weakness and hide beneath layers of protective pride. The more insecure you are, the more you will want people to serve you. But when you base your identity on your relationship with God, that allows you to serve others the best. The closer you get to Jesus, the less you need to promote yourself and the less you need your preferences validated. You are who you are. I am who I am. I know who I am. That's, you have to have that uh, my mindset. And that becomes when you have a relationship with the king, with the father. Example, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Simon Peter, a servant of Jesus Christ. James, a servant of God. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. These scriptures, then these people, these individuals, a servant of the Lord. And it's really like totally opposite of the world because the, those that grow higher or feel, you know, have certain, ex, have, have reached certain extreme positions or whatever, they feel like they have to be served. But Jesus mm -hmm. told just the opposite here. Mm -hmm. right. So that's why, I mean, even with, in our world with money, the more money you have, it's supposed to be the less things you do. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you got others to do it for you. But in this kingdom, it's it's, it's topsy turvy. The opposite, right? The higher you want to grow as a servant, the more you're willing to to give without honor in a, in that sense, because you re, you know you don't have to worry about getting your honor now from man. True. Worry about getting your honor later from God. Focus on God. That's back going back to our unity scripture. Our focus is on Jesus. So if we focus on him, we will be good servants because he, he shared, he showed us. And we, uh, I mean, he is our great example. I mean, that we have we always used to see what would Jesus do? There you go. He would serve and he showed us. So in conclusion, the end of, uh, this, uh, dealing with the servant is, are you secure enough in yourself to serve? Disciples most likely would have been happy to wash Jesus' feet, but they could not conceive of washing each other's feet. How about when we would do, uh, um, and this is going to make you laugh a little bit, communion and we had foot washing. People would, <laughs> people would line up and, and select their individuals that they're willing to wash their feet days before communion <laughs> because we weren't willing to to be a good servant it shouldn't matter whose foot you washed but we in our own ways were doing just the opposite of what what he's teaching here it was the task was reserved for the lowest of servants and while they all loved jesus they didn't love each other that much and it goes back to our scripture that I put at the end. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your passion and your prayers and your intelligence. This is the most important, the first of any list. But there is a second to set alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourself. These two commands are pegs. Everything in God's law, law and the prophets hang from them. That's what servitude is all about. So that's the uh, end of this lesson here on this. Uh, but we are looking for us to be good servants. Look at the needs, have the right attitude, the mindset. Don't get caught up on what the person to your left or to your right is doing that you may have value to be more important when it's not. When you look at an assembly line of an automobile, when they're putting it together, 
Each bolt, each screw is important. I got my technician on there. He knows you leave a, a bolt out of a, a transmission, you're going to have a headache down the road. So every part, every piece that each person does, they put that car together is very important. Each thing that we do as servants in the kingdom of God is very important. And we should be looking for ways to, to do what the Lord has called us to do. And you should have the right attitude, a mindset to look for an opportunity to do something. All right. Any other final comments from anyone? I have something to say. Say on, sister. Uh, no, um, first, first lady say, Sister Martin, you kind of quiet tonight. I said, well, I must have been on um, mute because I was, comp, comp, you know, I was saying things, but I guess y'all didn't hear. Um, I enjoy all the, you know, the ones who spoke uh, tonight, but my, I didn't hear nobody say nothing about motives. Um, you know, being a servant, um, that's all, in, that's all to me, it's like balancing too, your motives, you know, and I, I often um, remember what my husband used to always tell me about, about our home. He said, ain't no need to go out there if you ain't got love in your own house, you know, and I have heard, even in the Christian outlook, you know, you know, some ministers will confess and say how they serve their people, but their home is jacked up. So um, that's all, it comes down to balancing to me because it really should start, service should start with you, within you, in your heart, in your home, then you spread it. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. Because I was raised up in a, um, in a preacher home, pastor home. My father was a pastor. And sometimes I did feel that we was kind of pushed aside because what we need, we wasn't getting it because he was serving everybody else. You know, I mean, that's, I'm just saying that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just saying that, you know, and I, and I see that, um, I see that now. And, you know, I, and I have, I see that now that um, a lot of ministers and, 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 you know, people of leadership, um, they do serve. Um, you know, you, you will hear complaints that, you know, well, you know, you're not getting it from home first. And, you, you know, you're serving the people, but you're not getting from home first. That's just the input, okay? No, good. I mean, good comment. I mean, definitely. But we, we talked about balance, and, and it's important. We all are human, and we, we sometimes stray and put more emphasis on something else and forget about, about home. But many times, too, um, that individual that you feel might be neglecting their home may not look at it as neglect because you don't know the whole story behind right. the group that he's, that they may be helping. And because we don't, um, it, it, you, it, there's an imbalance and, and that comes, uh, helps others as well. So Jesus was teaching something. So sometimes even in our, in our, as a servant, we have to explain or share with our family members why we do whatever we do without disclosing a whole lot of stuff because some some things are private that that leaders do that are you know are there to help and and knowing their own family, yeah, they can feel that they can catch that up and get it to back together or they may feel that their their family may may uh, understand it if they later on a better by and by or know my, my role that I'm here to do that. So, but I, again, I'll, I'll just leave it at, at the point that we don't know the whole story uh, on that mm -hmm. side that you were speaking from. And, and Elder Henry was a giver. It, it just no, I mean, that was his nature. So um, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he would open up his house. Well, you know, you know, PK kids, um, I'm just speaking from experience. Uh, mm -hmm. PK kids really, uh, they have a ministry all by themselves. I mean, it's a ministry all by itself. I'm saying that with PK PK kids because I I grew up in this, and um, today I, things have got better, you know. Because I'm just saying, talking back when I was coming along, things have got better. I I see now where um, you know ministers maybe they learn from the from the old school, maybe they learn now you know to be more with your family, have family time, and you know so. You know, it, it has got better over the years. I, I, I've seen that, you know, I've seen that. 
you know, and, and then, then I think it, it, it just had to be taught too. You know what I'm saying? Because like you say, we don't know the whole story, you know? And so, and but, you can't uh, handle the whole story sometimes. So it, it's not that they would share all right. of it, but, but the, the, the thing that we have to always realize that there, you, you, to yourself, you know, there's someone always probably in worse predicament than you are. That's true. There, there's That's someone true. that needs more. Now you might not see it. You say they got a brand new coat and my coat, oh, am I such and such is helping them? <laughs> But you don't know the whole story. You don't know all the code. Yeah, I yeah. give up the code. Yeah. But it, it. But you're right. I mean, that's what we see and how from the back uh, children or whoever respond to what others are doing. But again, we, what we just went through, is we talk about the servant is not doing it to compete against anyone. And mm -hmm. as a servant, you shouldn't try to compare what they're doing with anyone. It takes prayer. It takes going back to our scripture again. It takes passion and it and it takes for us to be intelligent enough to mm -hmm. really, and this is the, the servant, to make sure that we're doing the right thing for to help people, that we're actually helping them looking at their needs. And right. Mr. Morant talked about that. And, and that's the lesson that we we teach our, our our children. My mom gave. My mom, she was a giver. Yeah. And and mm -hmm. and, uh, and your brother, I, I, being honest, he would say he would tell me we'd be in a meeting, and he would say, "Your mother did such and such a thing, and she told me not to tell you." Like I cared. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because mom never withheld anything from any of us, so we didn't worry about. I'm not saying I got everything I want, but I'm saying right. that we were okay if if she took if she whatever she did. She did it out of love. And it, right. you know, we didn't, she didn't keep things from us. Well, it, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, Sam, we didn't get it. No, I didn't get everything I wanted. But I, Elder Moran will tell you, you what you want, nothing. Ain't that right, Elder? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that was a saying I, that I, but I didn't want to prolong it. I, I just put that point out there. I, I, you know, I didn't want to prolong the Bible test. I just, you know, no, I it's okay. No, it's a good point, though. But yeah, but it, it's, it's always something else in the story. You don't worry about it. Uh, you don't compete. She wasn't doing it to compete. Your your dad didn't compete. You, that was your dad's spirit. So, you mm -hmm. you know, it was in him. But you don't want to be the other side of it either, where you miss opportunities in helping people. Right. All right. All right. Thank you so much for that. Let's uh, 